Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be going through some of the most common racks and grips that you'll use with a kettlebell so that you can have them down in a safe manner knowing how to load them up. Before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. It doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be going over the most common grips and racks that you'll use with a kettlebell in your kettlebell training. So my goal today is to show you how to safely load these rack positions and how you can basically scale them appropriately and use them in that way to scale the difficulty of an exercise. So from the ground, we have three that we're gonna be looking at, the standard Turkish grid up, get up grip, the uh, waders grip, and then the bottoms up position. And again, these are mostly to scale from the floor. You could use them for a Turkish get up, you could use them for presses, arm bars, that type of work. And then we're also going to be doing from a standing position, we'll look at the goblet squat, how to safely load that one. We'll look at the uh, front rack position and the uh, bottoms up position for those as well and teach you again how to use this effectively to load those positions so that you can from a standing position do squats, presses, all that good stuff with these different racks and make your exercises a little bit more challenging as you're doing them by just gripping differently. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, the first grip we're gonna start with is a standard grip. You'll see me turn to my side here and get my wrist in a neutral position, gripping toward the top horn. My forearm's actually running diagonally across the bell here. I wanna use my free arm to help roll to my back, and then I'm gonna also use it to help press in this situation. Now I can use this grip for Turkish get-ups, I could use this grip for any floor pressing work that I would wanna do, and I can also use this for arm bars and screwdrivers. So these are a couple options that you might be using this grip for. Notice when I go to transition the bell to the other side, I'm actually using two hands here to bring it up and over my head around to the other shoulder, and then setting up the grip once again. Neutral grip, the free arm assist to the front rack, it assesses with a press, and then from here, you see that I maintain that neutral wrist. One of the biggest problems people face with kettlebell grip is that it will bend their forearm back and actually cause them to break at the wrist in the extended position here. So we wanna be sure that that is one thing that stays solid, that you're always punching through toward the ceiling with the flat of your knuckles. Imagine that being what's driving through the kettlebell there. So in the beginning, it almost starts slightly flexed, my grip here but as I press up, you'll see that it is a neutral position, not over flexing, not extending in either direction. Now to make our grip a little bit harder, we're gonna show a waiter's grip. Here I'm using the free arm on the handle while the other palms the bell itself. I'm gonna adjust the bell so that it sits with the handle facing toward me. I just wanna make sure that I feel that balanced in my hand nice. When the bell's a little bit smaller, you can actually loop the handle between the index and thumb to give it a little bit more stability in the beginning as you're learning the grip. But as it gets bigger, it's all on you to really control the balance of that weight in your palm. As you go to lower, use the free hand, turn to your side, and then we're gonna bring it back overhead again with both arms to the other side. Again, the hand that's being loaded is on the same side as the bell. I'm using the free hand on the handle to help pull the weight into position, get to my back. I'm gonna adjust it so it sits nicely in my hand, assist with the press so that I have good balance. And then I take that hand out, have it ready at all times just to be able to help catch that bell if I need.
And lastly, we're gonna show a bottoms up grip. This time, similar to the waders, I have my hands in the same position, but I'm actually loading the opposite side, the hand that is on the kettlebell handle. With the grip, I wanna make sure that I am near the horn, that curve of the handle. I don't wanna be over it. I'm still on the flat side of it, but I do want my index finger coming up right into that curve as I'm doing it. When I bring the bell down, I use that free hand to turn to the side, two hands to roll over again. Remember, in bottoms up, we're always loading the opposite side. So here I'm actually gonna be working my left side. I turn to my right, I have one hand on the bell, one hand on the handle, and I turn and assist into the extended position with the hand gripping by the horn. I want a firm grip on this. I wanna make sure that I am crushing and using irradiation. So I am crushing the handle with that grip as hard as I can making sure that I'm maintaining that firm, solid position. Again, looking at the neutral positioning of the wrist. Now, bottoms up won't let you do it if it isn't neutral. So that's one of the benefits of actually doing exercises with a bottoms up grip is that it forces good alignment from the wrist all the way through to the shoulder and good mechanics in that way. All right, next we're moving to the vertical positions from standing. Here we're gonna be showing how to do a solid goblet. So we wanna start with a deadlift, move into a high pull, and then I'm actually, while the weight is floating, sliding my hands around the handle to the bell. So deadlift, nice explosive high pull, slide the handles to the bell. My thumbs are still looping the handle so that the bell runs between my index finger and my thumb. I'm simply using that float to allow my hands to transition from the handle to the bell. I wanna make sure my vertical pull is as straight as possible, keeping the bell close to my body, making sure it's not getting too far out in front of me. That's important. And I also wanna make sure that I'm locking in a solid plank at the top position, not overshooting the hips, making sure that the shoulders are in line with the hips, with the ankles and the knees. Next, we're gonna look at the front rack position. Here, I'm gonna use a single arm swing and a clean to get to that. So I wanna set with my shoulder down and back, reach my hips back, and I'm going to break the swing pattern of the bell. So I pull the bell high up into my hip crease, and as I drive my hips forward and that bell starts to swing forward, I wanna cut the path short and scoop under the bell there making sure that I keep a neutral wrist very similar to what we did in the very first setup for our Turkish get up grip or our pressing grips. So my bell gets a little bit of a loose grip as I pull it under, break the path, and I want the bell to rotate into the forearm and bicep there, keeping my shoulder down and back, again, locking in a nice solid plank position. It can help to assist with the other hand at first as well. What you would do is place the hand on, that is free in the opposing direction so that you can rotate the bell around the forearm and actually practice that rotation. So my left grip is over, my right hand would be underhand grip and I would rotate that around into the forearm and the front rack position to help assist in the very beginning if you're having trouble with it clanging and banging. I also have a video that I'll link here that shows how to do that a little bit better for a clean. And our last position for today we'll talk about is the bottoms up from a standing position. We're gonna use the swing to bring it into that bottoms up position. Now this gets a little bit challenging at first. And again, this is why we're talking about scaling these exercises. But the key is that you use a nice swing to set yourself up. So shoulder set, get a good grip on it. I'm leaning my weight over that bell, letting it help set my shoulder, making sure that I have a solid grip on the bell. Keep it rolled in back. We're gonna put the thumb into the pelvis at first and then rotate the thumb back over the shoulder, locking in that solid plank at the top. The key is that everything gets locked in 
when it's at that top position. So we need to have enough of a swing to really get that weight up into that vertical position. And then we need to have a good solid plank to stop it at the vertical position as well. So making sure that we're able to bring it to a dead stop in that top position, wrist over elbow and shoulders down and back connecting to the core well. All right, and there you have it. All the common grips you'll need to know for your kettlebell training so that you can load them in a safe manner and not injure yourself in the process. And also scale for a more difficult level of kettlebell training overall. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend if they're getting their kettlebell training, pass it along their way so they know how to safely load up and scale these grips. Now, if you are somebody who struggles with a training anchor injury that's been hindering the intensity of work that you've been able to do, what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description and fill out a coaching application. We'll get on what I call a mobility blueprint call, which is our opportunity to get on a Zoom call together and go through a quick assessment to see where your movement needs are, your mobility limitations are so that I can tailor a program specifically to your needs. Once I have all that information, I'll lay out in full detail how your program would look, what it's being delivered to you by, and how I'll be coaching you through that process, including the cost of the program and any options around that that I can offer you. If that sounds good, drop down in the description right now, fill out that coaching application and get your call scheduled. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it doesn't get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.